Hey guys, let's talk about identities today. Did you know that uh, you were given an identity at the beginning of this world? Uh, God created mankind uh, to be in his image, his identity. And uh, unfortunately, our long, 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 long ago relative Adam handed over the keys to the kingdom when uh, they bit that apple and they said, we want to be like God. And uh, what happened is it basically allowed us to have a second identity, which was a stolen identity. And that's where we get wrapped up in what we believe the world thinks about us, what others think about us. Um, but your identity, gentlemen, is not in what you do uh, and what people say about you, uh, what you like what you've been involved with, the good stuff, the bad stuff, that is not your identity. Your true identity is the identity that Christ gives you. But that's something that we need to discuss because uh, in order for you to walk in your real identity, uh, there's some things you need to do in your life and there's some decisions that you need to make. And we get back to that word, those two words, free will again. You have a choice. You can keep this world's identity, or you can go for Christ's identity. But let's dive into this, if that's cool with you guys. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. The word handiwork means God's masterpiece, made in the image of God to reflect his image. Can you imagine God calling you a masterpiece? He knows what you can be. He planned works for you to do that are unique from everyone else. Your identity is extremely important because there is really no one like you. Let's face it, not one of us is good, truly good. The only one true person who was good was Jesus Christ. And it's his identity. It's him dying on our behalf for our sins that allows us to walk and stand upright in righteousness before the Father. So if you look at Romans 3.10, right? There is no one good, no, not one. Now he said that even, it doesn't matter the apostles, it doesn't matter. There is no one good, no, not one. Romans 3.10, look it up today, guys. So what we need is we need, we need when God looks at us, we need him to see something else than who we are in our dirty rags, our, our, our works that are just nothing that we try on our own. When he sees us, if we have him in our lives, he sees Jesus. Our identity becomes that. Second Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. You are becoming a new creation every day. We're not perfect, but we are absolutely washed in the blood as long as we keep coming to the Lord and saying, Father, I need you. Forgive me for my sins yesterday. I need to walk in your grace today. And remember in the word, it says his mercies are new every morning. So I do want to hit uh, a bit of a tough uh, subject. And, 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 and if, if you know Christ, if you've made that decision and you've asked him to come into your life, not I think or I've always grown up or my parents said I'm a Christian. This has nothing to do with your parents' faith. This is about your faith. This is about your decision. If you have accepted Christ, then your identity is in him. And, and I want to help you, we want to help you walk better in that identity and more authority and more fulfillment, blessing your family and having an impact on this world. But if you have not accepted Christ, I want you to understand something very clearly. And, and this, doesn't, this doesn't make me feel good to say this to you, but you're not going to go to hell because you have tattoos or because you have a foul mouth or you just are plain out selfish and you want to do what you want and ain't nobody going to tell you what to do. The reason you're going to go to hell 
is because you rejected Christ. And what I mean by that is you made the decision to say, I don't want that. I'm doing my own thing. But again, just because you go to church, just because you're a nice guy, just because somebody does things and helps people out and I do good things and God's going to be cool with me, that's not the way this works. Uh, God's word is not up for interpretation by all of us. God's word is God's word. And what he did is he sent his son to die in your place, my place, all of our places. Because we couldn't do it on our own. And the fact that he doesn't just take his thumb and smash us, but he says, man, my heart grieves for you. I sent my son so that you would understand that I want you to be with me. So if you guys make a decision to go to hell and I love you and I'll come here every week that I can because I don't want to see that happen and I want to see you guys prosper and I want to see your families thrive. But if you make the decision to go to hell, it's not because God wanted you to. It's not because I wanted you to. It's not because any of us wanted you to or anybody out there wanted you to. It's because you chose in your arrogance to say, I'm going to do it my way. And you know what? Again, we get back to those two words, free will. You actually have the right to go to hell, but God never intended for you to do that. You need to know that. He's not a punitive father. He's not an angry father. God has done everything he can to open up the doors for you to be with him. But you got to choose to do that. Please know, even though I say hard words, guys, I love you. I am absolutely committed to you guys, and I pray for you. And uh, whether you say yes or no to Christ, I'm still going to love you. My heart just might hurt a lot more for some of you. But anyways, go get them, man. Make this life worth it. Make your time here in this jail worth something. Don't let the enemy take it from you and, and hurt you. Make a difference. Love you guys. Okay, let's take a few minutes and discuss all of this. 